This is an OSV Podcasts production. To learn more about OSV Podcasts Network, visit osvpodcasts.com. FIG Ministry presents the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Join me, Alyssa Aegis, and my co-hosts, Father Rob Gallia and Justine Cumbo, as we break open the upcoming Sunday Mass readings and discuss relevant topics and life issues from a Catholic perspective. For a shorter, more reflective explanation of the Gospels, be sure to check out our sister podcast, Catholic Influences, Father of Galia Homilies. The final episode of the season. No way. I can't believe it. Yes, we, we hopefully um, inspired you this season. We, we worked hard as a team. We did work hard in a very short period of time. But <laughs> yeah. you know what? It was re- it challenging personally as well I think there were so many things and nuggets of wisdom that came out or things hey I need to kind of attack this in my own life I I loved it yeah I I learned so much throughout Mm. this podcast as well like studying having to study for the this podcast and also just to think to reflect to pray yeah you never know what's gonna happen when you come to this table I feel Mm. like this table is so iconic like the revelation (laughs) you experience or the confronting things that we might not say out aloud but maybe in our heart we're like oh my gosh when I get (laughs) home or like inspired like wow when I leave this place like yeah, yes. I'm going to start doing this. So this table is a bit of a, a sacred space um, and and this podcast is a bit of a sacred space. So thanks for listening to our little <laughs> ponderings yeah. and mind-blowing moments. And too. like, let us know your big takeaways from the mm. season as well. I'd love yes. to hear um, if this podcast is, is, is impacting you and in, in what ways. Like, Yes. Uh, like, yeah, we would love to hear from you. Just go to frgministry.com forward slash podcast and there's all the information there. Um, but this episode is very different to our other episodes. Mm-hmm. This is the um, this is the episode where we get to actually answer your questions. Um, earlier in the season, we put out a call to all of our listeners and followers if they had any questions they wanted us to answer. Um, and you guys were awesome. You sent us so many questions, yeah. and we're going to do our best in this episode to try and get to as many as we can. Um, and Lord have mercy on exactly. us that, we <laughs> that <laughs> give us the wisdom to be yes. able to answer these questions because like some of them are tough and curly. So thank you for your questions. We're grateful for them. But Yeah, and you know what it shows? I feel like it shows our listeners are growing. There's depth well. there in a lot yeah. of the questions. It's like th- there are some nice, fun questions, like that is in like easy, mm-hmm. but there are some really difficult ones. So should we start with easy or difficult? What do you oh. think? Let's, let's ease in. Let's right. ease in, yeah. Ease yeah. in, okay. Um, oh, who's going to answer this? <laughs> well, it's we'll not directed see. at anybody. It's whoever okay. really wants to jump in. Oh, okay. Um, okay, this one. How do you choose <laughs> what mystery of faith will be recited at a mass? I would love to hear your answer to this, <laughs> Alyssa. <laughs> so My the, answer. So the mystery of faith, the, um, so the save us, saviour of the world mm. for by your cross and resurrection. Yeah, well, all of we those. We proclaim your we death. Well, Lord. okay, I'd like to hear it from a, a priest's perspective. How do you okay. choose? <laughs> well, um, I, I choose randomly i choose randomly there's no system to it um but one of the things i always do is i look at the projector so if <laughs> for example the musicians have already set one yeah. i'll do what the, what they're doing so yeah. you know what's funny is if there's one on the projector and you've prepared a different one to sing <laughs> yes i do the one that i'm prepared to sing 100 yes. yeah, yeah. right. percent. so it's usually a community thing in my parish it's the musicians really that decide yeah, yeah. and um i try to t- when i'm doing it i i do um, a different one every time and especially like for example when we, uh, the emphasis is on the cross I do save us saviors, mm. a savior of the world for by our cross and resurrection you have set us free yeah. but uh, um, funnily enough the one that is said most is we proclaim your yeah. death a lot because in the missal it's at eye level Oh, so, cool that? so that's the first thing you look at. So Human every time, even when I look for something new, <laughs> your eyes always fall <laughs> onto that one. So in a nutshell, the answer to that question is, I think the, the mystery of faith is one of those parts of the liturgy that is optional. Like yes. a lay person Not or a, yeah, a priest um, could which one sorry, is optional, to yeah. choose which one is <laughs> optional. Um, but there's many other parts of the Mass that are not, that are set for a reason. Nice. Yeah. Good question. Okay. That was a great question. All right, I'm going to go with a really light question now. How hard is it to make an episode of the podcast? What goes into it? Ooh. Well, it starts with studying. You've got a lot of studying. Well, no, actually, it starts with Alyssa. Alyssa, t- you, yeah, yeah, over to you, Alyssa. No, um, I'm happy to explain the process. It involves, um, firstly, the three of us kind of get together and we read the scripture and then we kind of discern a topic together. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do we do next? We pick that topic and then we go off and study individually. 
but no, before that, even like Alyssa puts everything on our software, like mm-hmm. online, and so we everyone knows what's happening on what week and what recording when it's getting released. The yeah. scriptures and and the topics, the 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 reality check. So there's a, there's a lot of administration Learning. work. That's and I love it. Uh, my Alyssa dream job. This, yeah. I love admin. <laughs> um, so we do that. We pick the topics. We study individually. We come together. But before we hit that record button, the three of us, like Justine said, this table, um, we have a discussion on mm-hmm. the things that we've learned, the things we want to bring up in the podcast. And then we pray together. We pray. And then and then we just press record. But when you press record, there's like, I use a roadcaster here. So like, uh, there's a lot of buttons to press. But if, if you see what we're seeing, there are four video cameras in front of us. Mm-hmm. So and then, and then once we've recorded this, then there's a lot of work. It gets still sent off this, um, to, to our be edited, yes. And then after that, it gets sent back to us, and we upload it to all the different streaming platforms. Upload it to YouTube, um, and then we prepare the social media content. So there's a lot that goes yeah. into each episode. And so even like after this, I'll be uploading for another two hours just content like to our producer videographer like yeah there's a lot of data so we end up with a each episode f- with about 90 gigabyte of data mm. to upload per some episode. very patient person has to wait around in the warehouse <laughs> while all that data gets uploaded yeah so we <laughs> love you, we, love you. we do it because we love you okay next yeah. question um okay let's go with something okay this is a good question the thought of reading and making sense of the entire Bible is overwhelming. Mm. What is the correct way to read the Bible? Should you start with specific books first? Is it meant to be approached as a group task like a book club? Well, we have a whole online course about this. The Introduction to the Bible that kind of splits it up in, the, in each parts and talks about how, how to read the Bible, how to pray with the Bible. Definitely check that out at Encounter Courses. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would maybe add there is no correct way Mm -hmm. um, but a a really helpful way would be um, the best place to start is to kind of get the overall story the narrative story Um, and a really great resource for that is the bible in a year podcast and it's helped a lot of people the great adventure bible Um, there's narrative books and there's also supplementary books um, and it's kind of not in the chronological order in the bible itself so that can be a little bit confusing but once you kind of get that narrative story and you understand where those supplementary books fit in it all Light bulbs go off in your brain. Yeah. And I think it's important as well when you read the Bible, context is essential. Okay, mm. don't, don't read things out of context. So it, it depends on how, I, I'd say the question you asked is, it depends. It depends on how well you know the, the Bible, how well you know the historical, critical aspect of the Bible. Do you know, um, it's, it's not a historical book. So you can't just go and read um, a verse by itself and uh, expect that that's the voice of God. The voice of God is in the context of the economy of salvation, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the revelation of God. So if you really want to understand, I would start, if you're going to start reading the Bible, start reading the book of Mark, the Gospel Mm -hmm. of Mark. Mm -hmm. Read the story of Jesus. Read the Gospels. After you read the Gospels, read some of the letters. And then refer to the Old Testament. But once you have a a grasp on that, then I do challenge you to read the whole Bible. Yeah, Because if you read it in context, it just changes you. Everything. Even the fact that you're already listening to this podcast is such a step that it shows that you want to grow. That's just amazing, I think. Yeah. Good starting point. Next Add question. Anything? Next question. Okay, we're bu- buzzing through. Time for a curly question. Oh. Ooh, brace yourself. Curly whirly. When a previous pope's rule for the church is not carried out by the reigning pope, which one should we take as the voice of Peter? <laughs> well, I'll start by saying, first of all, the pope is not infallible all the time okay the pope is the infallibility of the pope is only when it comes to dogma the pro- proclamation of dogma everything else he's a pastor he's a shepherd okay so the the uh, the pope is n- not one first of all to give dogma all the time so we always have the freedom to listen to discern our own way in line of the teachings of the church and also with the scripture now if the pope is in line with the teachings of the church and with the scripture and contradicts and i i don't know of any case that for example pope francis contradicted pope benedict he built on or he took a different direction because of a different time let's take for example latin mass Mm -hmm. the pope benedict never endorsed latin mass for example he just was trying to bring unity bringing the sects and different groups that had separated from the church and he's saying hey you can come and celebrate your liturgies within our, our Catholic Church. Mm. And, and then Pope Francis was trying to get rid of division in another way. 
and was restricting Latin mass because of division. Uh, what I'm saying is whether he is right or wrong, there was no contradiction between the popes. Mm-hmm. Now, one emphasis could see, hey, Pope Benedict endorsed Latin mass so and, uh, and, and Pope Francis has removed Latin mass. No. If you think that way, then you are just listening to what the media is saying. You actually have no idea of the story of things. So um, I'd say as long as, one, that his, the Pope is not contradicting scripture, not uh, contradicting to the, the, the t- teachings of the church, then listen to your pastor. Hey, as, uh, there's, if we want to work in, and walk in unity, then we listen to our current pastor. But uh, the, what the current pastor does is makes us love, directs us towards loving Jesus. They're not telling us, believe this, do this, do that. That's not what the Pope does. Mm-hmm. You answer that really well. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> really good. Next question. Um, how do I have better friends as a teenage girl? That's a very, that very good question. Um, I think that's probably something that I struggled with going throughout high school. But firstly, because I was so afraid, I was so insecure. And I think the first thing I would say to this person, whoever's asked it, is don't be afraid and be confident in who you are. Um, You know, I was always so afraid to be myself and I tried to change so much of who I was because I thought fitting in was like the ultimate Mm. thing. Um, But who I was wasn't a problem and who you are, I'm sure, is wonderful. And even in the midst of maybe feeling a little bit insecure or trying to figure it all out. um, But what I would say is how, how to have better friends. Look for people and friends who bring life. You know, who are the people around you who are living and offering a friendship that really resonates with the kind of life and joy and peace and love and kindness that you value? And I would say a good sign of that is to look at how they treat other people. Um, That's often a good sign um, because you've probably heard that saying that you become the sum of your five closest friends. So be mindful of how they're acting and how they're treating other people and the decisions that they're making. Um, I think also if you're struggling to make friends, don't be embarrassed about telling someone. Like sometimes you do need a little bit of extra help to make better friends and you just might be in that weird year level at school where it's just, you know, it's not connecting. That's okay. Like that doesn't necessarily reflect poorly on you or anything. Um, And also just to say like your good close friends might not be at school. Maybe your good and close friends are part of church and they don't come to your school or Mm -hmm. a part of a different, like if you do music outside of school, maybe your friends are there and that's okay. So I don't think there's like a script answer, but they would just be my points. I don't know if you have anything to say, Alyssa. Um, You touched on a few things that I was going to say. People that encourage you and champion you um, into becoming, I guess, the saint that you're called to be. Um, I was going to say something else and it's I've forgotten Mm-hmm. But it was something along those lines. I think you you captured Ban- it quite well. Banana boat. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> no, you can't get that well, out if of your head. It, <laughs> if I think of it later, I will um, go back to it. I will come back to that. Okay. How are we going for questions? Are we are we we're doing, them? We're doing well. We're okay, doing well. Good. Um, Next okay. Question. How does one decide to say the Nicene Creed or the Apostles' Creed? Okay. So the the Nicene Creed is the long one, so to speak, consubstantial with the Father. Mm-hmm. That's the um, key word there. Mm-hmm. And then the Apostles' Creed this is the shorter one. For example, online mass we say the Apostles' Creed, and one because we have to um, we have a limited with broadcast time, and and so we have to do that. Um, but I think there are ca- Justine. Why don't you like you? I'd rather it comes from me, and then I'll just. Oh, all I was going to say is there's no like um, strict rule of you must say this one at this particular time. I think they both assert and uphold the same thing. One is just a shorter version and one is a longer version. So um, I think there are recommendations about which you are to say, but mm-hmm. I think is it, it's up to the discretion of the priest. Yeah, the discretion of the, it's generally the discretion of the bishop's conference. So mm. a bishop's conference can decide, like you can choose whatever you want, or it can say, no, I want you to say the Nicene Constantinople um, Creed. You have to say that one. Mm-hmm. But um, like in Australia, my diocese, for example, says that we can choose whatever we want. However, if you look at the actual missile itself, there's a rubric. So the rubric is the red letters between the, the actual prayer. So the priest actually has instructions like lift your hands up, put your, <laughs> put your left That's arm great. down, put your right arm up or whatever. No, it doesn't have that much detail, but it gives you details of, of what to do. And, uh, and part of the rubric says something interesting. It says um, it, it doesn't say that you have to say this, but 
it does say before the Apostles' Creed, it says, look, um, when uh, at times of Lent, when there's an emphasis on the, on the cross and, and, and the suffering of Christ, um, this, the, the Apostles' Creed, the shorter one, can be said. So in reading that, it's an assumption that the ordinary mm -hmm. thing to say is the longer one. Whenever, whenever possible, but there is no rule. It is no one is no less than the other. Try and say consubstantial five times really fast. Consubstantial, 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 consubstantial. <laughs> is that four? Great question. Really great questions. Okay, another question. How do I respond to jealousy? Mm. I was going to say. Mm -hmm. um, I think it starts with coming to a realization. Um, that God has a unique plan for your life and that's different to other people. Yeah. Um, and to really spend some time reflecting and thanking God for the things that you do have. And when I think when we realize our own gifts and we're truly grateful for them, we grateful for them, we can begin to champion other people in their gifts as well. Um, but still like th um, feelings of jealousy come um, and I would encourage people to maybe pray about what you're feeling and maybe ask God to help you to grow in this area of what you aspire to be like, or this yeah. person's really healthy, like God help me to be more healthy um, yeah. and think of practical ways as to how you can, that was probably a really bad example. But yeah, but rejoicing in the, in the successes of, uh, of mm. others and be practical as well. If you <coughs> notice that something is bugging you, like really jealous, um, there's no harm in unfollowing them on social media or whatever until you calm down in a sense. Yeah. So just in a sense, be practical as well. Sometimes jealousy is something that we all, all experience. Just a little word from our sponsors. Encounter by FRG Ministry presents our online subscription package. As a member, you will receive digital on-demand access to Encounter's growing library of online courses. Encounter and Encounter Youth online courses cover teaching, devotional and practical elements of the Catholic faith to help individuals, teachers, students and parishes across the world grow in their faith and understanding of the Catholic Church and their relationship with Jesus Christ. Current titles include Knowing Mary, School of Prayer, Introduction to the Bible, The Mass and more, with new courses being added regularly. All Encounter courses include high-definition videos with expert and engaging speakers, testimonies from everyday Catholics, and downloadable content including interactive PDF guides, prayer cards, and wallpapers. These courses are also accredited for professional development for Catholic education staff in Australia. All Encounter Youth courses include teaching videos, interactive student and teacher PDFs with lesson plans, and guided prayer and reflection. For more information about enrolment and subscription options, head to www.encountercourses.com slash subscription. Be sure to follow us on social media on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Encounter Courses. So we might be in our final episode of the season, but don't fret because we have something really excited planned for you. We are heading into Advent next week um, and we would love it if you would join us for our online Advent retreat where we're going to um, journey towards Christmas. Um, a really cool feature about this Advent retreat is that some of it was actually filmed on our Holy Land pilgrimage in wow. October. Yeah. Um, Father Rob, Roseanne, Raphael and myself will be guiding you through this retreat. It's be a live, live retreat as well. It's free. How free. special. Yeah. Sign How do they register? They register at encountercourses.com forward slash advent retreat. Ooh, nice. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll Maybe be I'll be there. there. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> okay, next question. All right, we're going to power through. Should a Catholic who experiences same-sex attraction marry someone of the opposite sex if they find a partner? Should they stay open to dating or would it be better that they remain single? Ah, uh, yeah. Ay, caramba. Ay, caramba. Mm. It's a tricky one, hey. Mucha muchacho. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, let's just dive in. I think, um, could God call a same-sex attracted person uh, into marriage at some point? Yes, God could allow that, I suppose. Um, if you're, you know, a same-sex attracted person of faith, you're Catholic who really believes in marriage and that it's, a, you know, between man and woman, you might be looking for that spouse Try to look for that spouse of the oppo opposite um, sex. So it is it is possible. However, I think this comes with a, a really big disclaimer that that person experiencing the same sex attraction could be doing themselves 
uh, and the other person a disservice if they really don't experience a heterosexual attraction, you know, that if you are same-sex attracted and you enter into marriage or work towards marriage in a relationship, um, and if you do that without integrity, even with some good intention, without ever resolving your same-sex attraction, you run the risk of doing great harm like actually ruining your life and someone else's life. And that can't possibly be what God calls us to do. So if you're in a relationship and you're withholding the information that you do experience same-sex attraction, if you withhold that information, that's going to impact so much. So um, it would really, really need to be very carefully worked through. A lot of work would have to be done, I think, in that person's life. And, um, you know, discernment of marriage is between two people. And Mm -hmm. whether you're same-sex attracted or not, part of discerning marriage is is sharing all of your life and perhaps the big stuff with people, the hardest stuff that comes perhaps with your past um, and with who you are. And so um, you would need to share that, even if you have had a same-sex attraction in the past and perhaps don't like I imagine that's something that you would have to share with someone Uh, 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 on a practical level as well if it is not known if they know it and they haven't shared it with their spouse to be Mm -hmm. then it's actually case for an annulment so it's Mm. not a valid marriage because that is an impediment in a sense that is a a a great thing that can remove freedom Mm. freedom to choose the other person so absolutely Mm-hmm. they should yeah. must discuss it with the person yeah, you can't be flippant about it like yeah. there are many things that are, are so important um, but certainly in this area in the area of sexuality you can't be flippant about it you can't ignore it or suppress it um, you know or treat you just want to get married and so being in a heterosexual marriage is just something you'll tolerate um, you know so you're treating the other person as a means to an end like that is absolutely contrary to what the catholic church says and what the purpose and the value of marriage is so it's a very v- well answered yeah very tender and um complex one for yeah. sure Did you really well that was great um okay another similar-ish question should a catholic who struggles with the sin of lust be open to dating or would it be best to first work on their addictions and self-control? Mm. Now, these moments like this, I, I'd rather you guys answer because <laughs> you're more in relationships than, mm-hmm. than me. You'll, um, I'll, I'll pick up the pieces. I suppose <laughs> I'd just lead by saying like, w- the context of this question is we are all imperfect. You know, we're mm-hmm. all created for love, but we live in a, in a fallen world and a broken world. So, um, you know, even if you don't feel like you struggle with lust, you know, when you are in a relationship with someone, because you will really experience a sexual desire and sexual attraction, and sometimes even before, and that's a good thing, sometimes that can fall out of the context of love and into the realm of lust. Um, but to answer your question, yes, I would say it's an absolutely, it's a great, it's a very good idea to work through that struggle um, of lust before you enter into a relationship because your relationship um, with someone else should be grounded on love knowing that you're going to be imperfect but grounded on love and what is love that's such an important question to ask particularly when we are speaking about love at uh, lust and love is Uh, Love is to will the good of the other, to want their best, to desire their best, to serve them so that they can be their best. And and lust is all about using someone for your own benefit. So lust is the opposite of love. So yes, I think working through it is important. And what lust looks like is different for a lot of people. If that expresses itself in a a pornography addiction or an addiction to, to masturbation or a struggle, you know, getting help dealing with that and journeying through that and unpacking you know what has led you to that and what you're looking for and what perhaps has become disordered along the way um, is really important and so help can be really sus- specific in that way of yes and don't it's not about going into a relationship perfect and all fixed yeah but it's certainly not going to a place where you're um, in, in, a, in a place where you're going to destroy mm-hmm. life yeah. and freedom totally Totally. Yeah. Very well answered. Um, I think that should be a very important question and that you have a conversation about if you start dating someone um, because it's a bit of a make or break. I know if I've ever dated and as I am dating, that's something I actually talk about straight away with someone about pornography and about lust and about masturbation. I, I 
I'm not even ashamed. I just know how important that solid foundation of love is. So I would encourage you to, again, not expect the other person to be perfect at all. And no one is perfect. This is not a Disney movie. Um, But to have a real and honest, patient conversation with someone about that Mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Um, Another theological question. Where did Moses and Elijah go when Moses was buried, then disappeared, and Elijah was swept up in a whirlwind? I thought the gates of heaven were opened when Jesus died for our sins. Did Elijah go up up to heaven, body and soul, and did Moses go up to heaven? Well, I'll, st- I'll say this, that where Moses and Elijah didn't go was to a waiting room mm-hmm. somewhere to wait for Jesus. Because if we think like that, you're losing the perspective of eternity. You see, we cannot our brains cannot conceive think outside space and time we cannot think now when you die you're out of space and time you're not going to even purgatory you know they spend a hundred years in purgatory that's rubbish that's that's anthropomorphism basically we are putting what we understand in a human level into the eternity into the divine we're creating god in our own image when it isn't so So when you step out, when you die, you step into eternity. So there's no space and time. So today, yesterday, a thousand years ago, a thousand years time, that is all now. Now, we know for a fact that they could not enter into heaven without the cross of Christ. But... Who's to say that they they didn't wait a thousand years because they were out of time. So the event of the cross, even though it happened in space and time here on earth, in eternity, it was it is all now. Mm -hmm. It is all now. The moment you die, the moment um, the cross happened is all now. And we see this in the Eucharist. When we celebrate the Mm -hmm. Eucharist, Mm -hmm. we come to that place of the cross. Anamnesis. Anamnesis, exactly. So there is no space and time when we are in eternity so what we do know is that in space and time the first time elijah and moses saw the face of god was when transfiguration the transfiguration that is when they saw the face of god that was in space and time but they um it it sort of it's not like at that moment then they went to heaven no they were in heaven there's no way they could have come out of hell so to speak and and come to speak to God of out of a waiting room. Finally, you let me out. The genie let me out of the <laughs> bottle. This is again anthropomorphism. So again, um, they were in heaven, not because the cross hasn't happened, but it did happen because everything is in one moment of time. There is no space, no time. Even the scripture says a thousand years is like a moment and a moment is like a thousand years in the presence of God. Say anthropomorphism five times really fast. <laughs> 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 <Or> anamnesis. <laughs> we are going to do one more question. One more question only. Okay. One more question. One yeah, there we more. Go. One more. As a Catholic teenager, how do I have a better understanding of my faith and practice it daily? Hmm. Yeah, you go. I was going to say start to pray daily, start to... Talk to God daily. It doesn't have to be fancy words, fancy prayers. Just have a conversation as you were having a conversation with a friend. Um, that would be the first thing. I would say the next thing, start to read the Bible. Um, third thing, start to learn more about your faith. Learn more about what the church teaches, why the church teaches this. The next thing, find some faith-filled friends. Mm. Um, if you're a teenager, you're a perfect age to join a youth group. Um there's so many resources online. FIG Minister, we have an online community as well. Please feel free to join us in the that. Hub. The Hub. How did have we spoken that? about The Hub yet? I don't even think so. We so haven't. The yeah. Hub is part of our Encounter courses. Um, if you are, are a subscriber to Encounter courses, you have access to, to not, the not only the courses, the community. It's kind of like a FIG Ministry facebook e. Yeah, kind of vibe. But it's just, yeah, they're discussing courses. They talk about, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful community um, anyway. Yeah. yeah, there are a couple of tips from my end. Justine, do you have anything to add? Um, I, just to add things to that, I learnt so much from watching Catholic YouTubers growing up. Yes. Like, you know, Jackie Francois Angel, she was like my favourite and Ascension Presents, just a variety of random topics that really helped me. Um, going to Catholic conferences, if you have the means to do that in a, in a place, like those, they're kind of like the mountaintop moments are always very, very encouraging. Um, and... Just start day by day, as you said, just in those little things that you said. Um, and go, uh, yeah. and go to Mass as well, you know, yes. stay close to the sacraments. 
even if you get bored it's okay mm-hmm. just seek the lord seek the lord in the objective as well because yeah that's going to give you the strength yeah um so yes yeah, surround yourself community the eucharist as well um your bible podcast catholic influences yes journal <laughs> there's just so much stuff. <laughs> there's a lot of things if you yeah. want to learn everything about our podcast you can do that at frjministry.com forward slash podcast. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Season likes. eight. My goodness. High I five, can't five, believe five, we're five, at five, the end. Five. High five. Ooh. High five. <laughs> Ooh. Um, the end. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, we'll have season nine, hopefully. We'll be back. Don't worry. And we'll see you at the Advent back. Retreat. We'll see you at the Advent, Advent retreat. retreat. And if you've got any ideas, suggestions, where would you like this podcast to go? Please get in touch with us. Podcast at frgministry.com. If you love what we're doing, let us know. If you don't love what we're doing, let us let know. Us know. Nicely. <laughs> in a nice way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you guys have a great break. Yes. Um, yeah. we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Ciao. This has been a production of OSV Podcasts. To learn more, visit osvpodcasts.com.